Many celebrities like Mookie Betts, Wiz Khalifa, and Joe Jonas all own homes in Encino, California, and for good reason. If you're wondering if Encino is a desirable neighborhood to live in Los Angeles, you'll find out in this video. My name is Pierce and I work on a real estate team in Los Angeles where we help people relocate from all over, so join me as we look at some of the pros and cons of living in Encino, California. Encino is located in the southern San Fernando Valley on the northern slopes of the Santa Monica Mountains. My dad was actually raised in Encino. He grew up there and went to high school there. My grandparents had a house there for most of their lives. So I spent a lot of time visiting Encino when I was a kid. I'm gonna cover everything with you guys from cost of living to location and proximity to other areas to day-to-day -day lifestyle and things like that. Encino has a population of somewhere around 60,000 total people and it covers about 10 square miles in space. It's sandwiched right between Tarzana and Sherman Oaks, which are two somewhat similar neighborhoods that I'll cover in future videos. And it's another one of these neighborhoods that runs through Ventura Boulevard, which is the longest stretch of consecutive businesses in America. Encino is located just west of the 101 and 405 freeway junctions, which is one of the most important freeway junctions in Los Angeles. You can really get to all places in Los Angeles from this area, so it's a really good location to be at. And most of the land area in Encino is actually part of the hills south of Ventura Boulevard. Here you'll find these houses that are in these quaint and quiet neighborhoods, a little bit tucked away from all the traffic of the 101 in Ventura. You know, it almost feels like you're living in somewhere completely suburban when you're in this area. The neighborhoods are filled with all these beautiful trees and the landscapes typically are very well kept. And I also find the houses to be very unique with great curb appeal. You'll see a lot of nice styles of homes like modern farmhouse style. And if you drive north of Encino, you'll run into neighborhoods like Reseda, Van Nuys, and Lake Balboa. But yeah, Encino is one of those locations where it doesn't really matter which corner of Los Angeles you might need to do things in. You're very central to anywhere you need to go because of the freeway junction it's near and its location. You know, one direction you got the whole valley, the other direction you got central LA, the other direction you got the west side. So you're really in a center point to a lot of these super key locations in Los Angeles. And location is one of the main things that I think is important in Los Angeles because it's such a big spread out city and you have some suburban areas and some more urban areas. So when you get a location that's the good mix between the urban and the suburban, I feel like that's when you're getting the best of both worlds without sacrificing too many of the perks of having, you know, just solely suburban living or just solely urban living. So with that being said, I'm gonna say Encino's location is a big pro to living in the area. Now let's go over cost of living. We're only gonna call this a con because it's expensive, but in reality, of course, it's gonna cost a little bit more to live in one of the most desirable neighborhoods in Los Angeles. The median income in Encino is somewhere around $100,000. But if you do look at a map of the subsections of Encino and see how the median income breaks down. You're gonna see when you go south up into the hills in those really nice neighborhoods, you're gonna get closer to $180,000 median income. And then when you get lower towards the flats on the northern end of Encino, you're gonna see median incomes go as low as $50,000. So there's actually a pretty wide income range in Encino and there's some less expensive areas to live in and some more expensive areas to live in, just like any neighborhood, but it really does fluctuate a lot in Encino. Encino is made up of slightly more homeowners than renters, but it's almost split down the middle 50-50. When you look at the homes built there you can see about half of them were built before the 1970s whereas about half of them were built afterwards so that's another reason you get your large mix and variety of older built homes that aren't as renovated and then brand new homes you know little mega mansions on small lots and things like that or you know some really tasteful new modern farmhouse style homes like I was talking about so you really just got a lot of options to choose from when you look at the housing that's built in Encino because they have been building there since around the 40s. And that leads us to the median home price in Encino, which is about $1.5 million right now. And this makes it about like 20, 25% more expensive than other neighborhoods in Los Angeles. So it's not exceedingly more expensive, but it is a little bit more expensive when you compare it with Los Angeles' average neighborhood. And like we were talking about the variety of homes that are there, that also means that the rent ranges for the homes vary greatly as well. With that being said, on the affordable end, you can find two bedroom condos there for as low as around $3,000 a month and two to three bedroom houses for somewhere around four to $5,000 a month. And as far as apartments and apartment rent goes, you can find a one bedroom or studio for as low as $2,000 a month in Encino and two bedrooms for around $2,700 a month. And these rents are more base level prices. If you want like a nice renovated one bedroom in Encino, you're looking to pay about $2,500 or so. But in my opinion, for the location that you are getting, these are very fair rent prices when compared to other neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Uh, you actually do have the option of finding some cheaper places to rent where a lot of these nicer areas the base rent is gonna be above something like $2,000, so that's kind of interesting to note. So while Encino is an affluent area and you'll find a lot of wealthy people living there, 
It doesn't mean it's not affordable if you don't have the type of budget that some of these people have. Just remember if you need any help making decisions or have any questions about the area or other neighborhoods in Los Angeles, I'm always here to help. My information is in the description below and you can contact me at any time. So let's move on to our final section of the video where we talk about day-to-day -day living in Encino. For the vast majority of the year, Encino's average temperature stays around the 70 degree range. However, it is still in the San Fernando Valley so the months of June through September, you're going to see temperatures reaching the 80s and even the 90s, so do be aware of that. In Encino alone, there's about 4,000 businesses that employ about 30,000 people. And these businesses range anywhere from accounting or legal services to the Encino Tarzana Medical Center. This could be one of the reasons that contributes to the 405 and 101 freeway junction being crowded a lot of the time. Not only are people passing through there all the time, but you also have people that work in Encino coming from other areas. Now, I did want to talk about schools briefly, and you may or may not have kids but it can't hurt to know what's around. Encino has multiple elementary schools and charter schools that are part of the LAUSD school system. These are typically really good schools and I actually went to preschool around Encino when I was a kid and uh, you know back when when I was in preschool we still had the long swings. That was a good time man. We had those super long swings that you could break your neck on but I never died, so I'm glad I had them. Now, some of you might actually consider this a good thing. There's actually no public high schools in Encino, so you're not gonna have high school kids loitering around. In the flip side, there are many private schools in Encino, such as Crespi High School that a lot of my friends went to and my dad went to. Encino is also home to a five-acre California State Park called Los Encinos Historic Park, as well as the Sepulveda Dam Recreation Center. In addition to these, Encino has its own golf course, as well as the Balboa Sports Complex. This complex has a baseball diamond, basketball courts, soccer field, a kid's play area, an indoor gym, tennis courts, you name it. And most importantly, they have a six and a half acre off-leash dog park in Encino with about a hundred free parking spots. And lastly, don't forget the Sepulveda Garden Center. It's a community garden with about 16 acres and 420 separate garden plots. So you can obviously see Encino has tons of parks and recreation areas, really good place for kids, good place for families, and just a good place for anybody that's active or likes to be outside. You have a lot of options of things to do. As far as the people go, Encino actually has about two thirds US born citizens and about one third not. So you actually get a lot of international people living there. And about nine in 10 of the workers in Encino are considered white collar workers. And I wanted to note that the crime rates here are actually pretty low compared to other neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Just like Encino is about 25% more expensive than other areas, Crime is about 25% lower than other areas, so I guess you get what you pay for. And also when you're looking at shopping for things like groceries or clothing or whatever basic necessities you might have, Encino has a ton of shopping centers and grocery stores, a lot of variety to choose from, um, tons of businesses, so you really have a large choice of wh what you can do and where you can go. And they also have places where you can like get a coffee and work outside. And I know this is common for a lot of big neighborhoods, but it's just something that I wanted to note that Encino definitely does have. And these areas are nice. They're not covered with homeless people all the time and things like that. I would say that the nightlife in Encino is sort of so-so. If you want to get to better places to go out at night, go to some bars, things like that. If you're going to want to drive down Ventura closer to Studio City, or you know maybe go over the hill or something, but that's one of the cons, I guess you could say, Encino has. Although, it's probably because it's a very business and family oriented neighborhood, so you can kind of see why that's a thing. So overall in Encino, you have a pretty safe neighborhood, a lot of good places to shop, good schools and parks and recreation centers, and a lot of families living there. You'll have plenty of things to do, plenty of places to go within the community to spend leisure time. You also have central access to many different places in Los Angeles, you're very central to the whole thing. So in this video, we talked about Encino's centralized location in Los Angeles and its proximity to other areas and major freeways. We talked about the cost of living there and we explored homes and apartments. And we also talked about lifestyle and how your day-to-day -day might look in the area and the types of things you can expect to see. So once again, my name's Pierce and I work on a real estate team in Los Angeles where we love to help people relocate from all over. If you wanna contact me or you have any questions, all of my information is in the description below. Hopefully this video gave you some valuable information about living in Encino. If you do want more information like this about many neighborhoods in Los Angeles, I post weekly videos, so make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.